We are live. What is going on, virtual wholesaling community, REI Results Academy? We got Bernie, we got Christina, we got Gazim on here. You guys, man, I'm excited. This is the last call for me for the day. And uh, had a couple closings today. Had, uh, some coaching calls today. What up, Mario? I see you, bro. And uh, it's just been an all-around busy, productive, good day for me. And I'm hoping that you guys had the same experience. So let's uh, let's talk about that before we dive into Q and A and role playing and whatever it is that you guys want to cover. Um, if you're coming back on the replay. Let us know how your day went. Give us a, a one to 10, like 10 being your day has been amazing. One's like, scrap it. I wish this day would start over, but uh, we're live. So thank you guys for joining us. If you're watching this live and you're seeing this and you want to jump in, by all means, click the link in the comments section and jump in with us. So let's, uh, uh, Christina, I'm going to let you go first. Ladies first, like, how's your day wrapping up? Tell us about your day. What's a big win that we can all celebrate with you? Okay. Um, I've had a good day. I napped a lot. My big win was um, was talking to you, Bryce. We kind of narrowed me into where I need to focus, which is making a schedule and actually doing what I say I'm going to do. So um, that was really good. And then... Uh, I have some plans for the evening, so it's going to keep me busy until until it's time for me to nap again all night. <laughs> I love sleeping. I can't help it. But, I um, it. Yeah, it was a good day. It was a good day. And I enjoyed our call. We had some tough conversations earlier, but you know what? Yeah. That's, that's what this relationship's about, right? Like yeah. hold you accountable. And I'm, I'm proud of you that, you know, you, you took it on the chin per se, and you know where we need to start and restart. And so we got this, we got this. Kazim, I've been using you as an example this week, my friend, you've been consistent, you've been persistent. And uh, I've got some people starting next week that are going to be mimicking what you've been doing and uh, getting their butts back on track. Christina is not one of them, but she's gonna be doing something <laughs> very consistent uh, starting next week. And, and hopefully uh, she starts to see those results pay off sooner than later. So I'm gonna go to you next. You've been super consistent in the group. I'm curious, how's your week wrapping up? Like, how's your day wrapping up? Tell us about that, man. Yeah, my day's, uh, my day's going well. You know, can't complain. I was working from home earlier, so, so that's good. And looking forward to our call tomorrow, Bryce. So looking forward to that. And so far, you know, I've had, I followed up with about uh, two potential leads. I spoke to a two, uh, two people yesterday and we agreed on the price, you know, the price that they had, I was able to cut it down, you know, to ask them questions like, hey, how'd you get that? How'd you get that number? And, you know, we're not gonna pay realtor fees. You don't have to pay closing costs. So I was able to send them a purchase agreement and I'm looking forward to hearing back from them what they say about what I just sent to them. So, so that's two contracts I sent out yesterday and we'll see what happens later. I love it. I love it. So you sent it out to them. Uh, one thing, this is for everybody, not just Kazim, since Kazim is just getting started like in full tilt, you know, uh, this is still a learning experience for him. But for all of you, the minute you send that contract, I always want to make sure you guys have that person on the phone. So Gazim is like, literally, as soon as we get off this call, I want you to call that person and make them check their inbox because here's the deal. <coughs> Excuse me. If you send it to them and just hope and pray, you'll get responses like what one of our acquisitions persons did. We got a decline for the first time. I've never seen that. I didn't know you could decline a DocuSign. I've never had that. And so that will happen to you as well, or they'll just completely flake out and never reopen it again. So Gazim, as soon as we get off this call, I want to see you like call your, call your sellers, be like, Hey, check your email. I just want to verify that everything went through and see if there's any questions and then walk you through signing it. So you check this box, you hit review documents, you open your email, you hit review documents, you hit continue, hit start, click the yellow box on the initials, boom, hit the next one, hit the next one, and then hit the yellow box that says finished. And then wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. That was easy, right? 
And that's yeah. what they do. They'll nod their head. Yes. Yeah. So make sure that uh, you're walking them through that email or that DocuSign, whatever you use, make sure you're walking them through signing that and uh, you'll have a much quicker response in holding them accountable. They agreed to that price. Well, you don't want them necessarily, you know, not that you, you're afraid of anything, but you don't want them to download your contract, send it off to an attorney or their real estate friend, like, hey, double check this, like you're the best source of information. So as soon as you send that, as soon as you um, get an acknowledgement of contract or agreement, like call them up and be like, hey, are you in front of your computer? Okay, great, click and hit send and walk them through, open it up, review documents, continue, start, check, 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 finish, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I love it. So you got two sent out in the last 24 hours? Yeah, I sent I sent I sent them out actually last uh last evening, like around okay. seven seven PM Eastern. So yeah, I was gonna call them later today, basically after this call and see what happens and see if they got it. So I'm gonna do I that. I love it. I love it. I say if after we get done checking it with Bernie and Mario, if nobody else jumps on, Daniel, Alyssa, Jeff, Callie, I see you guys, Tommy, like jump in here live with us. No sense of sitting on the fence. The link is in the comment section. You guys jump in live. If you've got questions about real estate, that's what this call is for. So Gazim, if you're open to it, get their number, name and number ready. And uh, I say after we talk to Bernie and Mario, I say we call them and walk them through and get those things signed, bro. All right. All right. I love yeah. it. I love it. Bernie, how's your week wrapping up, my friend? Good. Good. Um, no real estate wins, but we got a big hockey win. Um, my youngest is able to uh, finally resume his off-ice training. So that's a big positive. Yeah. So that's what does that mean for him and the team? It means that he gets twice a week on a skate on a what they call a skating treadmill. And then he gets three times a week of off ice training where they do, you know, sit ups, jumping jacks, push ups, uh, you know, work on eye hand drills, uh, work on foot drills, stuff like that. Nice. So he gets some more one on one, some more direct coaching. Right, exactly. I love it. I love it. That's a huge win, man. I'm sure he's excited. Oh my gosh. Yes. I love it. I love it. You had another big win you were sharing like uh, you and your accountability partner got some stuff done. You want to talk oh, about that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mike had uh, was generous enough to uh, help me learn how to do my be social uh, media thing so um i got him his login and password today so that should be a positive i can get some leads listed in there i got a, some lead lists to load and get some calls out and hopefully get some money rolling in oh i love it i love it what up lee jones i see you my man i'm coming to you after mario so get your camera turned on Get your mic unmuted. Let's go. Mario, thank you, Bernie, for sharing. No Mario, problem. You look like you're headed over to where Bernie's hanging out on the beach, man. How's your <laughs> wrapping up, brother? Uh, I just got done. I, I went to the chiropractor. I got another adjustment, and I found out what's what's wrong with my back, so that's good. Going to get that taken care of. It's actually not anything as serious as I thought, but just some pressure up in my back. Yeah. And they're causing a lot of inflammation and they're causing my ribs to fall out. So it's like causing a lot of pain. In my Bro, but uh, I got adjusted. I feel really good. And <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess it is. I didn't think it was, I thought it was worse just because of the pain that I experienced, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. And they said that it's a pretty easy fix, just some like injections for the inflammation and uh, just bringing my ribs back into place pretty much. But uh, as far as for wins, I mean, I've still been making calls and things like that. But my biggest win this week is going to be in mindset. And that's huge because mindset is the limitation to your map. And it, it tells you what you can and can't do. And um, just been having a really big breakthrough, just been indulging in books and things like that. And I, you know, 
some people may not know it, but I struggled a lot with, um, you know, like, I don't want to call it depression, but just a, just a lot of things personally. Um, and, you know, I'm just really making some big, some big mental leaps. And, uh, you know, a big part of that is definitely this group and just being vulnerable with you guys and just consistently jumping on for the role plays and taking the criticism. And, and it's not a criticism, it's, it's constructive criticism. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a mindset. I mean, I just, I feel amazing and I don't, you know, I feel, I feel limitless. You know, I feel limitless right now. And so that's really my biggest win. That's awesome. I love that ex explanation. You feel limitless. And we are. We are truly limitless. And the only thing that limits us is the stories that we tell ourselves. And so I love that you shared that, Mara. Dude, I'm so proud of you, man. Like in such a short time, you've come so far and you've really come into a, a self-awareness. And, and that's probably one of the hardest things to do as an entrepreneur. And so I, I love that you took the leap of faith and you're working with one of my coaches that I coach with. Like that's a huge step. Like that saves me a lot of time, <laughs> but at the same time, like it gives you a whole different perspective on some of the things that I teach and train. And so I love that you've done that, man. And, and it, it, I'm sure that it's probably helped you and your wife out as well. Right. Like, I mean, I, I, ha I don't talk to her as much as I talk to you, but I'm sure the two of you have grown exponentially, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. And um, it's something NLP is really helping me understand myself and starting with my patterns and I'm able to just break my patterns and manage my state a lot better, which has really helped me to get more done because, you know, state management is very important because if you get into a, a bad state like anger, depression, or whatever it may be, if you can't manage that, then you're not going to get stuff done. It's going to, it's going to hold you. So it, it's really awesome. And you know, I'm really thankful for you to, for mentioning those classes as well, because it's just amazing. You know, the, the human brain is just amazing. And I, I want to, I want to master it. Love so. it. Love that. For those of you guys in the academy that might not know what Mario's talking about, um, you know, every month we have a guest speaker come in. And uh, a couple of months ago, we had Susan Stageman, uh, one of my NLP coaches, my wife, my business partner, all of our realtors coach with her and have for the last six, seven years. And I've known her for even longer. And uh, Mario and his wife took it upon themselves to jump in and, and work with her, work with her. Alyssa, that's not nice of you to send me private pictures of tacos. <laughs> if you can hear me, not nice at all. Not nice to send private taco pictures while I'm on a coaching call. <laughs> Lee Jones, Mario, thank you for sharing that, brother. I appreciate you. Lee Jones, I see you on here, my man. I'm going to jump in and, and ask you to take yourself off mute, share your share your beautiful face bro like world needs to see more of you how's your week wrapping up what you working on what are some wins that we can celebrate with you man lee jones He's probably a little distracted because he likes to multitask. I get it. So, Lee, when you can hear me or if you can hear me, take yourself off mute. Jump in, jump in the conversation at your convenience, my friend. I appreciate you for being on. So let's dive in here, you guys. It's uh, 20 after. There's a whole heck of a lot going on out in the world today between the ignorance, the politics, the e economy. But these hey, calls are really about where you're at right now and how we can get your business growing, going, or just up to that next level. So what questions do you guys have? What uh, concerns? Where are you guys at? Like, what can we work on today with you guys? Azeem, you're on mute if you're trying to talk, my friend. I said Lee Jones was about to say something. I hear him. I think I heard some movement from him. What up, Lee? Can you hear me? 
I can hear you now. What's oh. up, man? My bad. I was on the phone. You're okay. <laughs> I, so I didn't even hear nothing you say. I heard Lee Jones, but I couldn't hear the words. I was trying to get off this call. You're okay, man. I, I'd ask you to share your uh, share your face, share your camera, and uh, we're just going through, wondering how your week is wrapping up, what wins we can celebrate, and uh, kind of see where you're at, man. I think just celebrating, as far as like uh, being re-engaged, I can say. No, because I am, man. I you, you might go a while without seeing me. So I'm trying to, you know, more and more get re-engaged, get focused, and you know, trying to build 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 habits. So yeah. if I can get to sleep early and wake up when Gazine wake up, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Cause when he wake up, I ain't going to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Gazim, you inspire Lee, whether you realize it or not. We went to we went to lunch to celebrate McLean's big win last week and uh He's like, man, because he be getting up going to work. I'm just going to bed. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that was a that was a great call you have with McLean, right? I really appreciated that. I, I wanted to ask McLean a bunch of questions because what he did over his nine month period was just, I mean, that's just amazing. Like in terms of his, uh, I'm sure he had a strategy, right? You don't just accomplish a goal in nine months without having like a plan and a goal and a strategy. So I wanted to ask him a couple of questions, like what software do you use, does he use, right? Because right now I'm currently on a free uh, the free trial with PropStream, and and it's it's such it's such an amazing tool, right? I just want I'm just curious as to what tool McLean uses. Did he did he use VAs? Um, what market did he focus on? I'm guessing it's Texas. Did he like did he have like a like a plan in terms of uh, I'm going to only focus on ARVs of 350 or less, and in terms of um, in terms of walking properties, did he, did he, was he more virtual at first or did he start by going physically to the site to meet with the owner? Just, you know, some tactical questions I want to ask McLean just to get deeper insight into how he accomplished what he did in the space of nine months. So I just texted and tagged him on this video and uh, maybe he can jump in and, and answer those questions there. Those are great questions. You know, I, I wish that I could say that he followed our program to a T, but I also know that, you know, he looks at a couple of different things and he uses several different tools and he used, you know, our basic principles of our morning routine, our, our you know, he had at some point, I remember coaching, <coughs> excuse me, I remember coaching him on some particular calls um, specifically around time management and time blocking because he was already working a nine to five. And so he had to get laser focused on that. And he did use some other tools that I don't personally endorse. I don't have an affiliate. I don't have any ties to, um, but I would love to hear those, those responses. Dustin, I see you, man. You should jump in here. You're part of this group, bro. If you got time to watch, you should join us. Um, but yeah, those are great questions, Gazim. And, and I think that um, engaging those questions, maybe go back into the inner circle group, mm -hmm. put hashtag question and tag him and okay. just make a list. I think those are great questions to ask that uh, I, I didn't necessarily ask just because I knew some of those answers, right? And I knew that they aren't all about REI Results Academy and it was more around the, uh, um, here he is. He's catching the replay and he asked you to message him directly. So Gazim, he already responded. So what, if you would go into the inner circle group, our private group, our paid group, and just put a hashtag question and tag him on there. That way he can answer those questions in the group. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the whole group can, can benefit from it. So I'll, I'll ask those questions publicly. In yeah. The group. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. I, I wish that he could get on here, but I know that uh, he, he said he'll catch the replay and, and, uh, He's probably out grinding because that's part of his schedule. I do know that he does not live like close to the metro area. And so he was doing a lot of work after hours and like on lunch break while he was working his nine to five. And he was very laser focused on what those tasks were. So while he was working his nine to five during his lunch break, he would be making calls. And then after his hours at work, he would be, you know, sending out posts on Facebook, doing cold call prospecting, things like that. But I'll let him go into those details, so. 
Okay, perfect. I respect that hustle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know um I know his partner in crime. I forget his name. What's his name again? Oh damn it. Which Larry. one? Larry? Huh? Who which one? Larry? Yeah, Larry, yeah, Larry. The last time when I met Larry on the on the conference last year, your conference last year, he told me he told me a bit of a bit of nugget. It's like Saturdays, Saturdays and Sundays are one of the best days to call owners because they're usually at home. So I'm just curious as to what time period did he normally call the homeowners on Saturday or Sunday? Was it like in the morning? Was it the afternoon? Was it the evening? Because I know there, there are some time slots that are more strategic, where they're more happy, more relaxed, and more willing to speak to you. So, yeah. So I, I'm a firm believer. Well, you guys know, right? Like I always say, like I only work with people that are serious about working with me. So I always call between that three and five hour time slot, make three p to five p, and I don't start calling or prospecting first thing in the morning because of that same belief, Gazim, right? Like that same, that same belief that you call someone first thing in the morning, they're never as nearly as nice as halfway or three quarters of the way through their day. Um, same thing goes with the weekend, right? Like people are happy to be off. So Friday afternoons, Saturday afternoons, Sunday after church, you know, when people are out of that, you know, church mode, two, three o'clock, maybe they watch TV church or whatever. People generally tend to be nicer once they get up and going versus calling first thing in the morning. So there is some science behind that. Have I tracked it? No, just because I tend to just do all my calls between three and five. But maybe that's why I've stuck there unknowingly because they were happier. I don't know. Go ahead, Lee. Hey, that'll paralyze you too. Yeah, shooting first thing in the morning, shooting yourself. No, in the no, no, just uh, just to the point where you're just trying to figure out when the when the perfect time to call somebody. Shit, just call. <laughs> they don't answer. Call back. Shit. That's a nugget right there, <laughs> I, and I'm a firm believer of that. Just call. There's no wrong time or right time to call. If they're serious about working with you. They'll pick up the phone or they'll call you back. Yeah, you can't call them at, at nine in the night, though, when you're about to eat dinner, though. That's not a good time to call, though. Why do you believe that? Hmm. Because uh, cause at that time, like me personally, if I got a call at nine in the, mo- nine in the evening, when, when I'm trying to wind down my day, I focus on myself and just, you know, just de-stress from all the work, I'm not going to be in a mindset to, to speak to someone. At least that's my, my feeling, so... Ooh, I love these calls. Gazim, can I coach you for a minute? Yeah, yeah. Are you are you your target audience? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. I agree with Gazim because I'll tell you what, if you called my house at nine o'clock at night, it wouldn't be a pleasant conversation. So as much as I love that input, I'm gonna ask you the same question, Bernie. Are you your target audience? Are you your target audience? No, I'm not. But I do know that, like, for instance, I do know. Hold on. I'm in the middle of coaching something here. Okay. I can appreciate the fact that you want to justify your answer. On the other hand, I want you to think about the fact that your answer is still no, no matter what explanation or quote unquote excuse we give. The people that we are interested in working on are motivated sellers. They're motivated because why? They're in tough situations. They're working two or three jobs. Heck, maybe that 9 p.m., that 8 p.m. call is the only time they have available. True, true. And so I'm going to challenge both of you to really think about the way that you think of your motivated seller because your motivated seller and the way that you think are two different things. Me personally, yeah, by all means, you call me at nine o'clock. I just got my son to bed. I'm unwinding. I'm trying to get into my PJs or get the wife into lingerie. I'm not trying to think (laughs) about selling my house, but I'm also not in the market to sell my house. Right. But if I was in the market to sell my house, I'd be open to taking a call at any damn time if the price was right. And if we go back to our presentation, our presentation says, hey, 
I'm looking for a few houses in your neighborhood. If I made you a fair offer that made sense, would you sell me your house today? And if that's the case, and I'm stressed, I'm working three jobs, the wife just left, grandma died and left me a house I can't afford, kids are out of the house and I've got too big of a house, any one or all of those factors say, man, I'm so glad you finally called me. I've been looking for someone to call me. And unlike everybody else in this industry where they hem haw around and, man, I'm sorry I called you so late. No, we're confident that we are the best solution provider around. And so we're confident that, hey, I called you at nine o'clock, but that's because I need to buy two or three more houses this month. And the month is almost up. It's the 28th. And I still got extra cash laying around. And my partners, my buyers, they need to buy one more house. So if I made you a fair offer that made sense, would you sell me your house tonight? So as, as much as I love you guys, I got to check that. I got to check that right there because I don't want, I don't want you or anybody else to justify exactly what Lee Jones said, exactly what I've taught you guys for the last year and a half, two years, however long it's been that you've been with me. Like there is no wrong time to make a phone call. It's the right time when you're getting your bread and they're willing to give you their house. That's when it's the right time, but we'll never know if they're willing to give us the house if we don't make the call. Good point. Mm, that's good. That's a good Very point. good point. Alyssa, you're sitting here on the outside thinking about jumping into real estate. How are you feeling? Does this make you feel uncomfortable? What are your thoughts going through your head? No, I feel really good because I just, it's, it's all about a conversation and I'm out here with family. So sorry if you hear things in the background, but we were just eating and I just happened to like open up my Facebook. Yeah, I called and you out on those tacos. He <laughs> did. I was like, Bryce, I'm eating tacos. Give me a few minutes. So anyway, I just had some jackfruit tacos to shout out in Wichita Falls at Gypsy Kitchen and Bar. That's what it's called. So anyway, so coming into the real estate and just asking questions, I've just asked a few questions. I've been in, like interested in real estate, I guess everyone could say since we we're a little right playing like life, right? Don't we like build houses or sorry, Monopoly. Like this is, it was interesting then. And then it's interesting now. And Bryce was just like, oh yeah, you just got to get people that want to sell their house. And I was like, oh really? Well, that's funny. Cause my grandma just told me on the way to Wichita Falls that she wanted to sell her house. So it was like, it was interesting. And that's just where I'm at right now, Bryce. We haven't talked since. I love it. I love it. <laughs> he gave her and, and I appreciate you jumping on. So I, I'm curious where this is for everybody, like where you're at currently in your business, whether you're just getting started or you've been at this a little while, like what questions do you guys have for me that have come up this week that maybe you were like, man, I wish I would have had this answer right there on the spot. Maybe I'm talking to a seller, uh, talking to a buyer talking to the title company, like what questions come up this week for you guys that we can really dive in and, and help you un unravel? So, so Bryce, I have a question. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, Lisa, sorry. I didn't know you were about to jump in. Go ahead, brother. I was gonna ask you like, have you ever come across a situation whereby the seller says, you're gonna use my title company, not, not your title company. Cause if you don't use my title company, then the deal is off. Have you ever come across something like that? That's a great question. So let's role play that out. So Gazim, here, here's the contract. You'll notice right there on uh, page two, paragraph two, it says that I'm gonna go ahead and pay for the standard closing cost. I'm also gonna choose the title company. Go ahead and stop me at any point and, and role play that out. Um, the next paragraph says this, this, and this. Sorry. About the, about the title company, I want to use my title company. Oh, you want to use your title company? Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. Why would you want to do that? Because I'm familiar with them. I trust them and I know they're going to do a good job with my um, house. Gotcha. So you've, you've closed a few houses with this title company then, it sounds like. Yeah, that's right. I trust, I trust them. I know the whole team there. Perfect. 
I'm okay with that, Gazim. The only thing that would change is if, if you choose the title company, I have negotiated rates with the one that I use and I've closed several deals with them. And so that's the one that I choose. So if you want to choose the title company, you can pay for the title to be processed. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. What else am I going to pay for? Yeah, no big deal. You take care of the closing costs and we'll use your title company. Fair enough? Well, that's not what we agreed upon. Right. So if that's the case, I said I would pay the title fees. So I'll go ahead and take care of the title fees, but I'm also going to use my title company. They're going to use the same process. You're going to sign paperwork. I'm going to sign paperwork. My money's going to go into your account. They're held up by the same rules, laws, and restrictions as any other title company in our state. Fair enough? Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. So moving on, paragraph three says, da, 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 da. that's how I address it. Like, we can use yours, but you're going to pay for it. Otherwise, we use mine and I pay for it. Mm. Right, that's good. I, I think that out of the 7,300 plus transactions, I think maybe three or four times I can remember where we used a different title company than the one that I wanted. And that was because the guy was a lawyer. This was that. This was that. Whatever, whatever. It was like really minor things. But if that's the only thing that's holding it up, like a title company is a title company, but most of them don't understand a wholesale transaction. And so if you choose to allow that to happen and say, that's fine, we can use your title company, make sure that on the backside, on your disposition side of that transaction, make sure that you're holding their hand. You have that contract in, you get that assignment contract and you send it over hey, this contract is being assigned to this buyer and the difference is my assignment fee. I need it to reflect on the HUD. I think it's line 21. Um, the HUD's the same on every, uh, every state because it's federal. So, you know, line 104 or line 105 going to be, you know, it is what it is. Cool, thanks. Big fat 25K closing today. So yeah, so line 104, 105 is going to be the assignment, the difference between the first contract and the second contract. You guys are familiar with that though, right? And I always just act like they already know, but I don't let the seller have that conversation. I make sure that I control that conversation with the title company. So I'll submit my original contract, let them run their course two or three days or a week, and they give me a clear title back. And then I go and get my other contract, my assignment contract. And when I submit that, then I explain to them, okay, so you guys familiar with how this works? If not, I'd love to show you how we've closed all of our other deals. If you look at the HUD and line 104, 105, those additional lines there, just throw in the assignment fee too. The first contract goes up in line uh, 100. And then the second line is typically 118 to 120, which is the gross amount from the borrower or the buyer. And that goes on there. And the difference between the two, less your title fees, is my assignment fee. And if you guys don't know what a HUD looks like, you know, it's uh, federal OMB number 2502-0265. It's urban housing and development. Uh, form. It's federal. It's the same with everybody. It's, it's a federal form. That's how the title companies, title attorneys, all that process that. That doesn't matter what state you're in. Federal is still federal. So, <coughs> excuse me. That's a great question. Yeah, I'll let them use their title company nine times out of 10 if they're paying for title, just because I want them to know that we're serious. And if they choose to go and no, I mean, we're, that's not what we agreed on. Well, we also didn't agree that we're going to use your title company. I'm using mine because all my money's already there. And that's another leverage that you could play. You know, hey, we close, my partners and I close several deals with this title company. And so they already have all my EIN numbers and wiring instructions. And my money's already there at their bank when I submit this contract versus me having my bank get approved with your title company and a wire transfer and more funds and fees and things like that. That's another tool that you can use to argue that point. Okay. Good stuff, y'all. Good stuff, y'all. <clears throat> I 
and a, a cut off Alisa. So I guess she can go ahead and ask, ask her a question. Alyssa, I keep wanting to say Alyssa Page. That's my daughter's name. Alyssa, you had a question right there before I was answering Gazim's. Go ahead. Yeah, so I don't really remember the question um, because you threw so much knowledge, Bryce, in that moment that I was like, oh, yeah, it was so easy, you know. Like, yeah, I get it. I understood it. I was like, yes, exactly. Okay, it's just a conversation. It's really, when you get down to the nitty gritty, it's it's literally just a conversation and I'm so excited. And yeah, I, I completely forgot my question, but I was appreciative of the knowledge, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, I, I think everything boils down. I, that's You make a great point, Alyssa. Everything boils down to a conversation, <clears throat> you know? And, you know, at the end of the day, there's, there's some very basic principles of communication, right? Like, um, I just remembered my question oh, because you said that. Um, so you're going yeah. to go ahead. So I had a question of, is there like a certain hacking, like bio hacking to the blueprints of what you do? Like, do you have your own bio hack? to your own blueprint, you know? I feel like anyone can lay out a blueprint, but everyone can always change it, right? Like with houses, it's like, it could look, it could say 12,000 square feet, but you can make it look however you want in 12,000 square feet. And then a hundred different people will have the same exact blueprint, but yet have it in their own way. So I just, that's what I was wondering how it tied into the real estate, um, of how you could just essentially just have that conversation and be like, Hey, would you be interested in making your house like really awesome? Like, yes or no. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know that you'll be able to see this on your phone, but at the end of the day, I believe that every transaction, no matter what it is, is very simply put. And as a wholesaler, we're in the middle, right? And so you have a house over here that a seller owns and then you have money over here that a buyer owns, okay? And so the blueprint is very simply put, as a wholesaler in the middle, you put marketing out, okay? I'm a horrible artist with my, so you put marketing out to a seller, a lead comes in, And you have a conversation. When you have an intelligent conversation with the five steps to every conversation that I break down, warm up, move the needle, ask them defeating questions, which in turn creates a limiting belief, close the deal and warm down, then you get a contract. Well, when you get that contract, that goes to the title company. And then you market this contract out to buyers so you basically rinse and repeat the left side to the right side. Buyer leads come in, you have another conversation and you get a second contract. And that contract goes to the title company. So if the buyer says that they'll pay 110,000 for this house and the seller says that they want 100,000 and you guys agree on 100,000, the difference right here in the middle, this 10K is what you the wholesaler makes. I keep it very simple. So marketing goes out, leads come in, you have a conversation. With the right conversation and the right contract, you can market that out to buyers. Buyer leads will come in, you have a conversation and you have another contract. How we get paid is the difference between the two contracts. So using this for an example, as I'm speaking, right? If I'm, if I'm looking at this as an example, this particular property in Fort Worth, I've got it blotted out for marketing purposes. I agreed to pay $85,000. I got a buyer to pay 111 with the fees. That gives me about $25,000 in fees that I'm going to be paid today. So the two contracts, one was for 110, one was for 85. The two contracts go in, they're going to pay 111 and some change. That's because it has the um, it has the title cost and fees in there. And at that point, 
when those two contracts go to title, the difference is what we get paid. So marketing out to buyers and sellers, leads come in, conversation contracts get paid the difference. That's the blueprint. There's a million other coaches out there and they would tell you a million other things. And the first thing they always tell you to do is go to networking events, go find buyers. I don't believe that. I believe that you should be doing income producing activities, getting sellers to contact you, to have conversations, to get contracts. And when you have contracts at the right price, well, then you can market them out and buyers will come. Buyers are easy, leads are easy. The toughest thing you have to master is the conversation and the negotiation part. So that way you're getting those contracts at the right price. So that way the buyers come. That's, that's my blueprint. I'll stick to it till the day I die. There's not a coach in this industry that's done as much as we've done with as little as we have. I have a question, Bryce. Go ahead, brother. What do you do if after you send it to the title company, who ends up paying them if you're not able to find an end buyer? They only get, that's a great question. That's a great question, Bernie. So if you're worried about paying the title company, if the buyer doesn't come through, the title company only gets paid if the deal closes. And this is a, even going to lead to an even bigger nugget as to why we can save our sellers money. Let's say, God forbid, right? Like Alyssa and I are talking about her grandma's house right now. Well, God forbid something happens to grandma in the next week. And now Alyssa's stuck with this house that's not in her name, but she's the next of kin. What are most states going to do? They're going to say, go hire a lawyer. You're going to pay five or $6,000. And nine months down the road, the lawyer's going to get everything probated and processed into your name. X that out. The great thing about what we do is title companies only get paid when the transaction closes. If that's the case, we go ahead and contract that house. The title company realizes, okay, well, we need to get it into Alyssa's name, out of grandma's name. We go ahead and just file the $250 or $150, $130 and some change here in Texas. They probate the property, get it into Alyssa's name and close the deal. The only thing you would have paid in that outside of your normal closing cost is that $150 some dollar charge with tax plus your normal closing costs in turn, saving you about five grand from hiring an attorney. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so the short answer is title companies only get paid when the deal closes and funds. Okay, cool. I did not realize that. Yeah, and that's all the more so reason. That, Go ahead, Alyssa. So with that being said, Bryce, do they like help you? Do they really try to push for those transactions to happen like the title companies or oh, depending yeah title company you go with? Yeah, there's some that are going to work harder than others. Some are going to work shadier than others. I mean, there's some shady title companies out there that will make deals just fall through. That should never go through. So we want to make sure that we have a warranty on that deed. We want to make sure that we have all of the proper docs. That's why I, that's why I don't need this. I know my title company does what they do. But that's why I have them send me this HUD so I can double check. Okay, doom, 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 got the warranty, got the lien off, boom. So yeah, there's title companies that will, they work hard for you and some work even harder to get the deal done, not in your best interest. So yes, they do work for you. And a lot of them will, you know, a lot of them don't even know or understand what we do because they're so used to the rid the residential traditional realtor managing that transaction that they just show up with paperwork and half the time it's wrong and people sign it and they never know until God forbid little Sally down the street falls and breaks their ankle and you have to file a claim on your homeowner's insurance and oh wait, your house is still in escrow. So your insurance is invalid. Like these are real scenarios. If you didn't have a warranty on your deed to cover that, then your homeowner's insurance would then be validated. And then little Sally's broken ankle could be covered. Like these are things that, you know, I've had the unfortunate opportunity to learn through thousands of transactions that most people never even see. But yeah, short answer is title companies definitely will work on your behalf to get deals closed and funded because that's the only time that they get, they get paid. 
So quick question, Bryce. When you're paying the hundred and uh, some odd dollars, is, are you paying that to the, to the title company to probate the property? That's a great question. No. So they may have like a transaction fee, like $25 that they'll tack on top of it for processing that or like a recording fee. But typically the only thing you're paying for extra outside of those recording fees and their fees that they charge for processing the deal is whatever they're paying to the state. So for example, in Texas, it's like $132 and some odd change for a probate to be filed. That's all you're going to pay on that HUD plus the standard one and a half percent. So in this case, you know, settlement charges would be $1,653 and 50 cents. Uh, property taxes, that's something else that's not, you know, standard closing costs. So your standard closing costs on this deal is 1600 bucks. But if this deal needed to be probated, well, then you'd have that additional 138 and change added to that, plus whatever the recording fee for the title company, $25, $55 or whatever. But no, that fee is what the attorney is taking out of the 6000 that you paid them to pay the courts to process everything to the state. So basically the title Great. submits that to the oh submits that to the state for you. And then they'll probate it for you. And then that's pretty much it. That's good because probates are lucrative when you can yes. find them. Yeah. And what will happen, especially like here in Texas, if you hired an attorney to probate your deal, the, the attorney only knows what he is supposed to do, which is get a court date to get a, a hearing to say, this is what we need to do, your honor, to say, okay, let's file the paperwork. So that process can take six to nine months because it's not a priority. And the judge is like, oh, this is a probate. We push it off. We push it off. And then the attorney's like, hey, I need to get this done. We got a closing date. And then boom, right? Versus the title company, like they understand all they got to do is get it recorded. It doesn't have to go in front of a judge for a hearing or anything. So they just file it on record, show that they filed it and then close it on the HUD and underwriting recognizes that it's been filed and it's recognized in the state. That's a huge, huge gold nugget, honestly. That's massive. Thank you so much. That's great. I love these questions because I haven't had these really tough questions in a while. So and I have one more question, Bryce. So what qualifies a HUD? Say that again. What qualifies a HUD? Like what is HUD? What like what do you mean when you say HUD? Do you go after this HUD? Like what is what Yeah, is so the HUD HUD stands for you uh the housing and urban development, right? Here. It's a US government, right? So although I'm a homeowner, I don't know anything. We don't own anything. Like we own the rights to the parcel of land from the federal government. At the end of the day, like the federal government could come in and say eminent domain, we want this. And they legally would have to go through a court proceeding to push me out of my house, but they could if they wanted to. It, it goes back to the old reservation days. Like I, by the way, I'm not an attorney. I just have seen this and read this law a few times. So like, it goes back to like the old native reservation days. Like they push them into a reservation. That reservation is still owned by the federal government. And if we wanted to at any given point, if we needed that land, we could take it. But unfortunately, look at the native American Indians and their land and culture that they have. They don't have anything worth grabbing. And that's why the government was like, yeah, you can have that, right? And we kept all the good stuff as Americans. I hate saying it, but it's the truth. And it goes for the same. So the HUD, there's nothing that qualifies the HUD. It's just simply the Department of Housing and Urban Development. It's their paperwork that says, okay, we've allowed this much land, the state of Texas, to the state. And now this little chunk right here is being occupied by Alyssa Montez and her family. And so when you bought this little piece, you recognize that to the state, the state recognized that to the HUD or the Department of Housing and Urban Development. It's just paperwork. It's a department within the federal government that manages the land that the states have that they delegate to the citizen. Does that make sense? 
get me going down conspiracy theories and this doesn't turn into a coaching call. <laughs> Gazim is like, what the hell? This was supposed to be just a regular coaching call. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't quite catch. I didn't quite understand what you just explained. I'm going to have to watch a replay. It's not point. important. Let's call your people and get them to sign your contracts. How about that? Uh, we're going to have to do that off, uh, off, off the Zoom. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't want to do it right now. Okay. Okay. I'm fine with that. But I have another question, right? So I'm sure you do deals outside of Texas, right? You, you do some yeah. whole deals out. Do you still use your own title company or do you use a different title company? So is, is the title company, is it national or is it just focused on Texas? That's a great question. So each title company is licensed in each state specifically. And some states don't necessarily require a title company. Some, like, some states have title attorneys mm -hmm. that process the paperwork. Yeah. Some have title companies, some have both. So every state is gonna be different. So I like doing deals in California, Florida, and Texas, and a little bit in Utah and Salt Lake City. In Florida, they have title companies. They also have title attorneys, just like Texas. But in Texas, when you do a deal, at some point in the title and underwriting process, an attorney has to go over it. So every title company in the state of Texas is typically owned by a, an attorney. Or if it's not, they have an attorney on their underwriting team, maybe at another company or another office that they sub those deals out. Hey, look at this, they kick it back. Now an attorney looked at it, they went through underwriting and you're good. But every state is gonna be different. Great question. Do you use your exact same contracts in every state? The one every that state I use the exact same contract. You just change the, uh, like the state name on the contract when you Yep. Yeah. So we had uh, Jeff Watson wrote our contract and it is Jeff Watson, the bad boy. He, he's the best attorney in the U S when it comes to real estate, in my opinion. And most people will tell you the same. Yeah. He's uh, I believe he's licensed in 47 of the 50 States. And, and, and so he, uh, he wrote our contract. The only thing that we have to change is the actual state and County in whichever we're doing the deal. Gotcha. Now, all litigations on my contract, so like on page three, and you guys all that are in the academy know like on page three, or you should know, you should know your contract. <laughs> on page three, paragraphs two and three, where it's talking about the terms and conditions and jurisdiction, I leave those for my county and state. Because if you're going to sue me, well, I'm mm -hmm. doing business in Texas, you're going to come to Texas and sue me. I was actually uh, looking over it, like when I dropped my screen, my video, that's what I was going back over the contract looking at it, because I'm, I've never used it, but I'm you know, editing it now, and I'm actually going to start using it, so that's what made me ask that question. Yeah, the only thing that you should change is the county, city, and state, and where the transaction's happening. I leave the jurisdiction as my county. Gotcha. So my LLC is filed in Texas in Collin County. So my jurisdiction states Collin County or Dallas County, depending on which office I'm, I'm working that deal through. Most of the time it's going to be Collin County. Since. That's a fire question, Joe. I actually do have one more have question. Go ahead, Mario. So uh, would you recommend, uh, like, for example, you could somebody could pull a list of high equity absentee, right, and just start calling. But would you recommend for someone, because we're doing the triple ripple, right? So that's something I follow. So I do calls Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday. But then Wednesday, I'm starting a new round of calls. And then I'm going Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so my question is, would it be would it be smarter for a, a solopreneur to laser focus by stacking list, or would you recommend just going after a single lead type? 
That's a great question. So two things. One, I want to go back to the triple ripple. If you don't know what my triple ripple is, it's three days, three weeks, three months. Every three months, it's how we follow up. Mario, it's not how we prospect, just to be clear. So, okay. for example, if you have leads coming in on Tuesday, well, then you're going to call them Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then you'll move them to next Thursday, 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 and then out 30 days, 30 days, 30 days, and then out 90 day, 90 day, 90 day, and then every 90 day thereafter till they sell or die. If they come in on Friday, well, you're going to call them Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or in my case, I only work Monday through Friday. I'm going to call them Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and then push them out Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. And I only do my scheduled follow-up. So once they hit that one week, one week, one week, I only do that on Tuesdays and Thursdays because that gives me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to prospect, depending on how many scheduled follow-ups I have on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So it's only for, for actual, so if I call, cold call, I call 300 people, let's say I get a lead, that one lead would be the person that I triple ripple. Yeah, so if you cold call would it all be 300 all the that I call that day? I'm going to call those same 300 tomorrow and the next day. If you get two or three each day, then that triple ripple starts over. So let's say today I called 300 numbers and I got two people. Those two people start over and I'm going to call them tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow on a separate sequence outside of the first sequence. And so when, when you, in your CRM, you'll use the new attempted to contact scheduled follow-up on those three tabs. If it's a new lead, well, then they all get changed to attempted to contact. If you talk to those person, then you schedule them specifically as a scheduled follow-up. These must be called this day, this day, this day. Does that make sense? Yes, and that, that helps me out a lot. And it'll also free up so you can keep a warm bench so you can keep leads coming through your hopper. So that way, if you can afford to have 300 leads come in each day, boom, you call, you have 300 leads come in each day, right? Or you are only calling, you're prospecting, you're prospecting every single day and only following up with the ones that are warm or hot. Okay. That makes a lot of second, sense. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. The second part of that question was um, lead stacking. So, excuse me, lead stacking at the end of the day, I mean, there's a ton of different lists out there. You start stacking lists, you're going to narrow down your list essentially. So, you know, I like 55 plus absentee owners. After closing 7,300 deals plus in the last eight years, I've seen that 80 plus percent of those deals closed that that seller is 55 years or older that don't live in the house. So if I narrow down, if I do a 55 plus, and then I, I compare that to a water shutoff with tax delinquents, that list is going to get smaller and smaller. And sure, while it may be more laser focused, that doesn't necessarily mean that those are the ones that are motivated. That's just my opinion. Other people would say otherwise, but think about it this way. If I'm going through a divorce and I'm 57 years old and I just turned my water off and you and five other people called me, I'm going to be really pissed off versus the 300 people on a 55 absentee list that you may talk to four or five that are more opportunities. Does that make sense? Yeah, I kind of cut out there a little bit. Um... I caught like the ending part of it. Um, not sure what happened, but basically, so if the ones that are lead stack, they could be getting called by more people essentially is what, was that what you were going at? Essentially they will be because other people have similar ideas. And I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't work water shut off list. I don't work pre foreclosures. I don't work those things just because sure they're laser focused, but you're going to have less opportunities, one with more people's hands in the pot. That's just my opinion. 
but I'm also, I think differently and I would rather people call me than me calling them. And so that's why I do the Facebook posts that I've shared with you guys. That's why I do the blanket direct mailing and then re retarget that same list for six months. Like I don't buy a new list for six months because I pound the shit out of those people. And by the time that fourth and fifth and sixth month come in, well, guess what? They're not getting people from five or six months ago that bought that list. And now they're ready, right? Or radio, right? Like for 2000 bucks a month, I can hit 10 times the audience over and over and over and people are calling me. Now, not everybody's going to be able to do that. And so if you are going to maximize your ad dollars, I would say buy as big of a list as you can, call, text, and email if you can. Otherwise, call, and this is kind of what Christina and I went over, like sometimes it sucks, but if you can call 3,000 3, people over the next three months, and then over the next three months, you call 1,500 of those same 3,000. And the next three months, you call 700 of them. Well, guess what? Now you just maximize that 3,000. And where most people would get a 1 in 10, you're going to get 2 in 10. So now your 3,000 lead list just turned into, you know, 30 or 6 deals versus, you know, 2 deals. because you're maximizing that list and you're calling them, you're texting them, things like that. But I worked the same list for six months. And I buy- That a makes big, a lot of sense. I just buy a big list and keep working that same list. Google, I'm not talking to you right now. I don't know how to shut that off, but Google thinks I like to talk to her now. I, I like to talk to Google. I do. <laughs> I think it's I think it's kind of cool. I'm like everyone might as well listen because I'm being real right now and it's bombs, you know. It's like helping the world. So I get it. I get it, Bryce. <laughs> Larry, I see no. you turned on. Give me some good news, my friend. <laughs> Not in Hawaii, man. <laughs> right there in McKinney, Texas. Got his lay on with his flower. You're on mute, bro. Oh, oh, I said, what's up, guys? I'm chilling out of the pool, man. <laughs> had, had a long, stressful day. <laughs> you turning red, Bryce? It's been one, hasn't it? Yeah, man. Is Any that a flower in your head? Is that a flower in your head? I, I, who's that, Mario? No, that's Kazim. I said Kazim. flower. Oh, Kazim. Flower? Yeah, bro. Oh, <laughs> it's just like how every day you start in the morning with you know with your videos. I start every day with a flower in my ear, bro. Keep it fresh. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Looks good. Looks good. Appreciate it, bro. Right. So how good is that data you get from us? That M power. It's been good, man. I, I don't that, have uh, any. That's what you use for your list, right? Yeah. I use Empower and then I use uh, Listability. See, I've been using Adam's data. Um, yeah, I haven't heard of that one. Might try them out. Does, that, does anyone use Mojo? Larry, do you use Mojo as, as, a, as a dollar? No? I used to use Mojo. Mojo, what it is, man. Especially if you get that three that three line dollar, you'd be all right. You get some work in. 300 calls in an hour, you can get in 300 calls in an hour. Cause they ain't made chime in. They ain't playing. You know what I mean, man. That's how I used to be. <laughs> what'd you say? What'd you say, Lee? I didn't. I didn't quite get you. <laughs> I said you how I used to be. Let me see what Larry doing. I'm gonna ask Larry what he do. Let me ask Bryce what he doing. Let me ask Christina. Let me ask Mario. Let me man, just do it. <laughs> it's called. <cool. laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, it's. No right, Christina, I gotta no, run to you guys. guys. It's quarter after six. From the best man, you know, guys with close deals, man. I want, I want to know what they're getting. Yeah, I don't, I don't use a power dialer, 
but I do use VAs. But prior to having VAs, I just picked up the phone and called. I got you, Jones. I'm gonna I'm gonna call, man. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna call. I'm not afraid of calling, man. I, I mean, I'm not afraid of the phone. So I Hold on, I gotta take this call. This is the closing right here. All right, fellas. Felicia, give me some good news. I haven't heard anything. Ain't nobody called me or nothing. Ain't nobody called you? Oh, goodness. Andrew, I ain't heard nothing from Well, I'm on. Give me one second. I'm on another call. I'm wrapping it up. Stay on the phone. Don't hang up, all right? I won't. All right, one second. She's trying to get this deal closed, Larry. Ain't nobody called me. I, I talked to this lady five times, and four out of the five times, she's been at KFC getting a bucket of chicken. I called her today. That's my kind of girl. Woo. She said, no, nope, I ain't getting no chicken today. I did that on my lunch at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I died. This little old lady... She's so nice, but she loves KFC. All right, y'all. I love you guys. I got to take this call. Namaste, everybody. Great call, you guys, today. Thank you so much, everybody, for jumping on. Y'all have a great night. All right, guys. God bless. Peace. <laughs>